but overall, what was Bassett doing to keep this offense quiet? Um, he's, I mean, he is the epitome of the kitchen sink. He'll throw everything. I mean, you know, he's, he will make things up on the fly. He's very good at, um, um, just coming up with different pitches. So it's hard to really get a beat on him. Um, you know, and he has pretty good command with everything, you know, is that sinkers is bread and butter that he gets to, but you know, he'll mix in the slow curve. He'll change speeds on the slider. He'll cut the ball. Um, you know, he just, you know, mixes it up just about as good as anyone. And um, we just weren't able to get a beat on him once we got settled in, too. Speaking of command, Luis Heal seemed off tonight. Seven walks for him. Do you attribute that at all to the extended layoff, or you just think it's a matter of not having, no. not having it? No, just a tough night. Credit to him for being able to get through five. I mean, it's a testament to um, just how good his stuff is and how hard he is to hit, um, you know. It, it, almost anyone else goes out there and does that and you know they're hanging seven eight nine on you and on a night where we're really short you know he battled through it actually finished pretty strong um but but obviously you know that was an issue for him tonight you mentioned battling through it five innings for him his longest outing of the year three runs kept you guys in the game essentially is that just an, an area of growth for him of being able to to give you guys innings and grind through it when he doesn't have his best stuff? well i i mean i think it i think it just goes to show you when he's in the strike zone he can be dominant and will be dominant and that's just that next level for him is is just getting you know and that's what we've seen that's where we've seen growth with his ability his strike throwing ability tonight it was a challenge for him um and if that continues to improve you you got a peak even on a night where he struggled how difficult he is to to square up so um Glad he was able to kind of grind through it, especially on a night when we had to have innings. You mentioned not the extra rest. Was there anything in particular you saw that contributed to the command issues? Um, maybe a little out of whack with his um, delivery um, um, is probably the best I can say. And, you know, had a handful of misfires. I'm encouraged what you've seen from Marinaccio. Yeah, yeah, and that was nice to, to you know, it was a big two innings for us tonight. Uh, and, and efficient, um, you know, filling up the zone, mixing mixing his pitchers, the sliders getting in to be a little bit of a factor for him. Um, and, uh, but obviously the, the change-ups is bread and butter, but I, I like how he's, you know, getting the fastball um, more consistently to where he wants to get it. Aaron Boone with a pretty good breakdown there of Luis Hill and the problems he have. And as you started the show, Jack, you mentioned consistently two up in the zone, but also some of those pitches that we saw yanked away from right-handers into the left-handed batter's box that Austin Wells basically had to chase down. You don't have to be a pitching coach or a former major league pitcher to watch Luis Hill tonight and know that something wasn't right. And you just detailed part of it, Bob. Trying to throw pitches up in the zone, but throwing them two up up in the zone so was he not finishing everything there and then whenever a pitcher yanks a pitch the way he yanked some of his pitches today something is not right with the way that they are releasing the baseball and they're just spraying it to the outside so that happened with the fastball that happened with the changeup. John Flaherty was all over the fact that we didn't see the slider at all in the first two innings he didn't throw one he finally threw one and that's the one Biggio whacked for a double so for some reason he and Wells came out of the bullpen and didn't think the slider was a weapon for him that made him a two pitch pitcher and Bob when you're a two pitch pitcher and then you don't have your fastball suddenly the Blue Jays are watching that in the dugout and they're kind of sitting on changeups waiting for him to throw strikes but I do agree with the other part of what Boone said in that interview the guy's stuff is electric and the Blue Jays probably should have had more runs than they ended up getting off him tonight he saved the bullpen he kept it to a three to one deficit, but the Yankee offense never mounted a comeback. Well, let me just do a quick follow on that because they almost, the Blue Jays, get themselves into trouble, right? Like maybe they thought, oh, he's a two pitch pitcher. We can figure this out. They get too aggressive and they just give themselves outs. Right. They got the win tonight, so they're happy and they're right. smiling in their clubhouse. But Bichette getting picked off in the first inning, that was inexcusable. I think that absolutely was called from the Yankee dugout because Heel doesn't have the quickest pickoff move and he even stepped off.
and it was a slow motion almost pickoff move. Second inning, Kiermaier, after watching Heal, a young pitcher, walk three straight guys, strays out of the strike zone to swing and miss. So, but again, that goes back to what Boone said. Heal's stuff was good enough to make Kiermaier do that. So, a lot of lessons learned by Heal tonight. Chief among them, you got to throw strikes. You can't face 23 batters and walk seven of them. You got to throw strikes at the major league level.